Because future-looking statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, our reminder is that you should make any purchasing decisions or investment decisions based on products that are currently commercially available. Hey everyone, I'm John Whalen. I'm a product manager at Salesforce, uh, focused on security products like Shield, Platform, Encryption, and a new product that we are launching later this year that we're all pretty excited about called Security Command Center. Today, I'm actually here to talk about Security Command Center, and so I'm going to explain a little bit about what it is and what it does. And uh, if you stick around to the end, there will be a quick demo that shows a couple of use cases that you might find interesting. Now, Salesforce, we view security as a partnership between Salesforce and our customers. And Salesforce has a responsibility to prepare our customers for an ever-evolving threat landscape. And we do that by providing tools and features and products built into the platform that customers can then use to meet their half of the responsibility by applying them to meet their security needs. Now, those could be regulatory requirements or it could be your own internal security policies. That is somewhat irrelevant. What we do have to do is make sure that we are providing all the necessary tools and capabilities that allow our customers to be secure and meet their half of that security responsibility. Now, security can be viewed uh, like this. And we, it, it's a phrase we use frequently in security we call defense in depth. Uh, and what this really means is we're providing layer upon layer upon layer of security controls and protections that when put together provide a really strong foundation for security. Uh, it can be similar to the layers of an onion where you peel back one layer and there's, there's more layers below it. Now, we start with physical security, and that's protecting things like data centers or offices or physical locations in the real world. You go a layer deeper, and you're looking at infrastructure security where you're protecting servers or networks or other infrastructure pieces that are required to provide the software and services that Salesforce provides. Go a layer below that, and you start getting to where customers can take control and start influencing security. Now, that's things where you are perhaps um, either requiring or encouraging, we strongly urge you to require the use of multi-factor authentication uh, or single sign-on or federated identity where you can take additional stronger control over the identity of users uh, and how people are authenticating into the Salesforce environment. You know, application security goes a layer deeper where you're uh, implementing security at the application layer. And that's things like session security requirements or just using uh, typical uh, security controls like field level security uh, or some of the, the more advanced controls around uh, things like shield event monitoring and field audit trail. Uh, and you go a little deeper than that and you get to data security where you're uh, protecting your data at rest. And that's where products like shield platform encryption come into play where they allow you to uh, encrypt data at rest in the database itself at a field level. And take all of this together, again, it provides you with that really strong foundation uh, around security that you need to protect your data. Now, we understand customers are expecting a seamless secure experience. We also know that modern apps and erratic traffic patterns combined with multi-org and, and in some cases, multi-cloud complexities make security a whole lot more difficult than it should be. And that's why we created Security Command Center. Security Command Center is designed from the start to be a simple way to manage security. It doesn't matter if you are a single org customer, if you have 50 orgs, or if you have 100 orgs, and then later versions, you can have additional clouds like Marketing Cloud and Commerce Cloud. It won't matter. What matters we give you a single pane of glass with which to view your security posture across all of that so that you don't have to go log in piecemeal individually to each of those environments to really understand what's going on. You see everything you need to see, and in later versions, you'll have the ability of controlling everything you need to control to see and enforce the security posture in your environment. We also understand security teams are small. They don't have a lot of time to spend sitting in front of dashboards all day, and we want to help them and help you by providing proactive notifications when something happens that needs your attention. Now, it could be you have users that are logging in through what you perceive to be insecure mechanisms. It could be uh, you have a bunch of users that are, you know, uh, suddenly gain a particularly sensitive permission. And whatever that may be, you get the notification that says, hey, this happened. You should probably log in 
and take a look and, and drill out and find out what's going on. And lastly, we want you to have the ability of analyzing trends over time. A lot of the tools that exist on the platform today, things like Security Health Check, great tools, they're a great start in, in understanding your security posture, but they're also point in time only. Security Health Check will tell you exactly how things are right now, but it won't tell you how things were five minutes ago or a week ago or a month ago. And without really understanding that, you can't understand, are you trending up? Or are you trending down? Are you getting better or are you getting worse? Is the return on the investment that you're making really materializing the way you expected it would? We allow you to see that with Security Command Center by giving you that historical view. You now suddenly have access to how were things a month ago, how were things a week ago, and are we getting better? So Security Command Center gives you all of these things. You know, it gives you that, that view uh, across your entire environment. It gives you that historical information that you need, and it lets you know when there's things that require your attention. But we're not stopping there. We're very, very uh, hard at work on adding additional integrations with existing platform features. Now, it's things like data classification, where you can classify the data uh, that's in your Salesforce instance. You know, you can say for this field, I want to mark that field as, you know, that's relatively public information. But for this other field, that's super, super secret and super sensitive. We want to mark that as, as highly sensitive. You, know, you can set that. And then other parts of the platform will key off of that data classification. We're also working very, very closely with the detection and response team uh, and event monitoring teams, which is part of Shield, uh, around threat detection. Now, threat detection detects uh, potential threats to your environment. It could be things like uh, credential stuffing attacks, where somebody is trying to uh, to utilize uh, stolen credentials to log into your environment, uh, or just detecting uh, potentially bad behavior of internal users. You know, it has uh, quite a few things that it's looking for, and it tells you when it sees those. So being able to pull threat detection information from all of your environments or all of your orgs into a single interface so you can see it holistically instead of piecemeal one by one. Uh, Data Mask is a fantastic product that allows for masking, or I guess not technically masking, but more anonymizing and pseudonymizing data as it moves from your production environment into a cop full or partial copy sandbox. Uh, allowing you to protect that data and make sure that uh, any contractors or third parties that are potentially working on your sandbox environment on integrations uh, can see production-like data without actually seeing your production data. Uh, with Data Mask uh, integration with Security Command Center, you will be able to define a Data Mask policy once and apply it to the orgs that you want to have that policy. Uh, event monitoring, platform encryption, and the other Shield products we will be integrating with as well. And for those, uh, we'll be doing things like for transaction security, which is part of event monitoring, you'll be able to set policy once and apply it multiple places. Platform encryption, you'll be able to see encryption statistics and how things are encrypted across your environment, as well as maintain uh, your encryption keys from a single interface uh, while still maintaining unique keys per org. Uh, and then lastly, we'll be working with the other clouds. So things like Commerce Cloud or Marketing Cloud, Roku and Pardot and Quip and Tableau and MuleSoft and all the other Salesforce products. We'll be working with them to uh, integrate them with Security Command Center such that you can maintain security across your entire portfolio of Salesforce products from a single interface uh, without having to go touch each one of those individually every time you want to understand your security. Goal here obviously is Let's make sure we have uh, all of the information that you need to make decisions around security uh, and, and make it as easy as possible for you to be able to do that. Now that I've talked a bit about what it is, uh, I want to show you Security Command Center so that you can see it for yourself. And I'm going to walk through a couple of scenarios that you might find interesting. Now, when you first launch Security Command Center, you get to the dashboard. Uh, the dashboard is a high level view of the key security metrics for your environment. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of these. Uh, I am gonna drill down into a couple of them individually, uh, but uh, a couple that I will highlight are things like, you know, average health check score. This is actually utilizing the information we get out of security health check. And it's giving you an average score uh, over time, uh, averaged across all of the orgs that you're monitoring and giving you that kind of rolling average. In this case, we see it's pretty flat, nothing has changed and that's okay. 
Authentication by type is breaking down how users are authenticating your environment. Are they using single sign-on? Are they using multi-factor authentication? Or are they just using uh, username and password? Uh, it gives you that breakdown and allows you to drill down into the details to find out what's going on there. Now, one that I want to highlight and what we're going to drill down into here is modify all the data permission. So this is actually looking at users that have a particularly sensitive permission in Salesforce. The modify all data allows you to do a whole lot of stuff. Uh, and you should probably limit the number of users that have this permission to as few as possible. In this case, we actually see over a few days ago a jump in the number of users. Uh, it looks like two users gained the permission. Now, on this uh, graph, you can actually see each individual dot here is a specific day. If you hover over it, you will get a count of the users that have this permission on that day. Um, so that's how we're able to say, okay, we know there's a jump of two users. Now, let's look into the details here of what's driving that and see, is there anything we need to be concerned about, or is this OK? Uh, to do that, we click on the link, and this takes us to the detail page. Now, the detail page at the top here, you're seeing a time series. It's actually showing the number of users uh, per day that have this permission. Uh, and again, just like the, the previous screen, each dot represents a specific day. You can hover over it and see the number of users uh, that have that permission on that day. So again, if we look at the third, we see that we have 15 users. If we look at the fourth, we see there are 17 users. OK, so there was an increase. Now, at the bottom here, we have a date picker. And this allows us to select what day we want to see data for. And so if we select the fourth, uh, we can see that the, the graph here, the chart here at the bottom uh, is uh, now populated. Now, this is showing us what has changed on the selected day. It's not showing all of the users that have the permission. It's only showing us what changed, who gained or who lost the permission on this day. Now, we get the tenant information or the, the org information. We get the user information. And we get to action. Action is telling us what happened. Uh, in this case, a permission was added. It's either going to be added or removed. Uh, and we get to context. Context is really important because it tells us how this happened. So in this case, we see a user had the permission added. And they had it added because they were granted the system administrator profile. That profile has a permission as part of it. This is normal. This is OK. Now, below that, we see another user. Uh, they had it added not through a profile, but through a permission set called modify all data. That looks pretty legitimate to me as well. Again, nothing we really need to worry about, but at least we can look into it and see, OK, yeah, this is, this is OK. And within a few seconds from logging in, seeing it, and, and drilling down into the details, we're able to get to what we want to see here. Now, if we wanted to see all the users that had this permission, we click all data. And for any selected day, we can see the users that had this permission. You can see the top view. It's, it's now changed a little bit. We're actually showing a breakdown of the number of users per org that have this permission. And then below that, you get the full list of users that had the permission. Now, let's change gears a little bit and look at a different metric and a different scenario that, that uh, addresses an issue that, that's frequently encountered. It can be very difficult to understand a accurate inventory of installed, managed, or unmanaged packages across a large environment. Now, admins can go and install packages or uninstall packages. Uh, they don't always tell you that they're doing it. Um, frequently, they don't. So it can be difficult to really get an up-to-date and accurate uh, inventory of those packages. We've made that super simple. Uh, because we collect all that information and we show it to you here. And just like the previous metric where we were showing the number of users that had modified all data permission, uh, we still have that time series when you first get to the, the page. And it's showing each day how many packages were installed across your environment. We're not telling you which orgs they were installed and just you know, how many. Now, again, you can see there's a change. And you can drill down into the details of that change by just going to the date picker and selecting the date. In this case, the fourth again. Uh, and we can see two packages were installed. That matches up with the, the numbers that we're seeing on the top there. And we can you know, clearly see, OK, this is what this is what happened. We had two packages that got installed across a couple of orgs. Great. That, that's useful information. But if we wanted to see that full inventory, you can get that full inventory. And you can have that inventory per day. So I can go back and look, OK, well, two days ago or a day ago, uh, the previous day, uh, this is this is what the inventory was. And you can see on a day-by-day -day basis the inventory of packages that were installed in your environment. You can sort that by package name, where now you can see 
all of the orgs that have a specific package installed. Uh, or you can do uh, by org ID, uh, where you can actually see all of the packages that are installed in a specific org. Uh, it gives you a couple of different ways of looking at the data, both of them potentially useful depending on your, your uh, specific needs. But it gives you everything you need to at a glance, uh, see, hey, there's something I want to look at. Um, or if I want to get a full inventory, you can click uh, within a couple of clicks, get to all the data that you need. Now we do have a beta. That beta is in the summer release. It's uh, just now rolling out. And you can get access to the beta. Uh, all you have to do is reach out to your account executive and ask for them to enroll you into the beta program. Uh, they will have to go through a relatively easy process for them to get you in. Uh, there's a few things that we have to do uh, to get you guys started and set up, uh, and they will be able to get that process started for you. And with that, I want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate it, and I hope you liked what you saw. Thanks. Have a great day. Did you know most of the time we all have positive intent, but sometimes it's the impact of our actions and words that can do harm to others? We all make mistakes, but we can commit to remembering it's the impact, not the intent, that matters. Skilling up on equality makes us a stronger community. Learn more on Trailhead and earn the Inclusive Marketing Practices Badge. We could all use a North Star right now to help navigate these times. Inspired, we created a web app that allows anyone to create a digital vision board to help guide you through these times and inspire you to thrive and emerge stronger. The app is called My North Star, and you can find it at mynorthstarapp.com. The experience is easy, fun, and takes less than five minutes. It allows you to add your vision for how you want to be during this time, the values you want to prioritize, the actions that will bring your vision and values to life, and finally, the photos that will inspire you. For every board posted on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook with hashtag MyNorthStar, we will make a donation to UNICEF, who are on the front lines helping families all over the world impacted by COVID-19. What does your North Star look like? 